I have three questions for you. When is the last time you slept in a one-star hotel? When is the last time you ate in a one-star restaurant? Now, if that answer is hopefully never or a very long time, the follow-up question to those is, when is the last time you would expect a patient to come into your office if you have a one-star online reputation? Because the truth is the answer is never. No one's going to come into your office with a very poor online reputation. And therefore, what is your reputation costing your practice? I'm going to dive in that today. My name is Dr. Derek Barron. This is Practice Insider's Edge. I wanted to bring you a video really to try and help you talk about maybe some ways in which you can help build and grow your online reputation. It's not just about the online reputation. It's about other things. And I want to go over kind of a presentation with you about that. So let me add that to this. So it's, it's important that you understand that every single day, your reputation from all across the board, it can cost you something. It can cost you finances. It can cost you patients. It can cost you relationships. But I want to go through this and kind of show you some things. So the, so, the song says, and I'm not going to sing it. The song says, I don't give a damn about my bad reputation. Those lyrics sound fun and rebellious when Joan Jett sang them. And if you don't know who Joan Jett is, just make sure to Google it. But taking that attitude when it comes to your online reputation for your practice can be disastrous. Not caring about your online reputation is a mistake. And your online reputation consists of more than just a carefully thought out website and social media pages. Most importantly, your online re reputation is something you can control for the most part. So the elements of your online reputation, you know, here's what you need to know about that. Your online reputation is the total of everything shown or said about your practice online. That means that all of these play a role in creating your reputation, the quality and design of your website, your blog, and you do have a blog, I'm hoping, um, your social media pages and posts, your online reviews, your testimonials, and video testimonials are a plus, your professional credentials, and your online listings. In other words, you can have the best website in the world but if your online reviews are terrible and you're not managing them properly, your reputation may be significantly less wonderful than you want it to be. So how can you get a handle on your online reputation? If you're not sure about your online reputation says about you and your practice, here's the first step you can do. Do a reputation audit. That means Googling your company and Googling your name and getting into the nitty gritty of what people are saying about you and what they think. And this is important for you to actually help build and grow your practice and make changes in the long run. Now, I suggest starting with Google and scrolling at least the first three pages of results. Visit any sites that mention your practice and or your name, read what they say about you and your staff, make notes of any factual inaccuracies or negative comments. You'll need to know those down the line, especially when it comes to Google, because they have now recently given you a way in which you can dispute negative or poor or inaccurate reviews. Likewise, track your social media mentions. If you don't know what people are saying about you on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, it's possible that you could be allowing incorrect or negative information about your practice to spread. Make a list of all review sites where your patients have reviewed your practice and or yourself. At the same time, audit your NAP listings so you can standardize them and consolidate your online presence. When it comes to the NAP or NAP, it means name, address, phone number. It's critical that they match across all platforms. We'll discuss that. It's important that you claim your listings on review sites. You wanna make sure every review site where your practice is listed and you do what you need to do to claim those listings. The process can be involved, so it's important to start as soon as possible. Now, here's a little plug. If you don't know how to do that, we can help you with an audit. If you don't know how to claim your listings, we can help you with that. If you don't know how to um, add the content inside of there to make your practice stand out, of course, we can help you with that. But it's really important from the name, address, phone number, or that NAP perspective that your practice of ABC chiropractic or ABC physical therapy matches the same from Google to Yelp to Facebook to your website, yellow pages, instant pages, whatever it is that you have on there, you want to make sure it's all matching. And once you've claimed your listings, you should update all relevant information about your practice and do your best, like I said, to match what's on Google, create compelling descriptions, 
upload photographs, including images from the inside and outside of the practice and mix in some patients that are in there too and probably some of the services that you offer and maybe even some of the products that you may sell. And set up a system for responding to all reviews, positive and negative, and that's critical. So negative reviews aren't the end of the world, but they can cause real problems if you don't respond to them promptly and professionally. Remember, every negative review is an opportunity to demonstrate that you care about your patients. And I want to just do this real quick and speak to you personally. So it's important for you to understand that when there is a negative review out there, it's a great opportunity for you to build trust in your community. I just actually spoke with a doc today. Um, there was a negative claim that was made about him. And in the conversation with that doc, he had told me that he had had a staff member that was doing things that he was unaware of. Part of that, re that review was about what the um, staff member was doing, but the other part was misleading. And he was afraid to respond to that. You should never be afraid to respond to reviews because you may uh, cause a secondary response to come through. People know there are crazy individuals out there. So if you do your best to reply positively and within a good light and do your best to sometimes take the blame because often that is the case, it may be you and or your staff, your prospective patients that are seeing that will like you. Plus you also get some love, especially from Google, if you are showing um, a response to the negative reviews. And of course, you still wanna to respond to the positive reviews as well. So uh, let's see here, do, 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 do. Um, you wanna get more reviews. And how do you get more reviews? They play a huge role in your rep reputation because more than 80% of all consumers read reviews before purchasing a product or service. Old reviews don't carry as much weight as new ones and that means it's your job and your staff's job to encourage your patients to leave reviews. Every single day a patient comes in there, you've got to understand that you need to be asking a high amount of them to leave your review. If you don't have a platform, reach out to us, we can help you, we'd love to help you with a review platform. So here are a few creative ways to get some reviews. Create an email sequence to ask your patients to write reviews, including links to one or more review sites. Google for sure, Yelp if that's something that you uh, like to deal with. Uh, Facebook as well, anything, uh, vitals, anything that will help you and your practice grow online and in your community. Explain how easy it is to leave review. You can say it's typically four uh, questions that are out there. What's your name? This isn't really when it comes into video testimonials, but what's your name? Uh, what did you come in for? How did we help you? Would you refer us to somebody else? And that's kind of a little template in which you can give them. So provide this basic review template for your patients to use. Um, do some pro bono work or give to a charity. Now, I don't always tell people to give things for free, but every once in a while it works, um, especially it can be your time. So not only will you generate some good karma to that company or to the community or the organization, but it's likely that the people are at that event and or receive, on the receiving end of your generosity will say positive things about you and your practice, at least within the community. Incentivize your employees to ask for reviews. Let me go back to that, excuse me for a second. So if you incentivize your employees to ask reviews, it's simply that as you know, in the month of August or in the month of January, we're gonna do a contest of how many of your staff members get the most reviews, reward them with a $25 gift card to Starbucks, anything like that to get more reviews because the reviews are gold to you and your practice. Send a handwritten personalized note asking for a review. When is the last time you think your patient or a prospect has ever received a note from a doctor, physical therapist, massage therapist, anything personal, a very, very long time. It's something that will add an added touch to help you and your practice get more reviews. So if a patient praises you or expresses gratitude, thank them and ask them if they've left a review. If they hadn't, tell them how grateful you would be in order to share their experience in review. It's also a great time to try and get a video testimonial from them. Respond to all reviews. Like I said, patients who look up a practice on Yelp or Google or Facebook may be more likely to leave a review after the fact if they see that the healthcare business owner regularly responds to the review. That means they'll make a buying decision to choose you over a competitor and they are more than likely going to leave a review for you at the end. And then many of these same rules apply to video testimonials. Again, video testimonials are critical for how much you can share, share them on social channels and your website and mail them out in your email that hopefully you're sending out at least once a month like as in a, a newsletter. So the best time to ask for video testimonials is when the patient said something positive to you or your staff during 
or after treatment. For example, ask for a testimonial right after a patient says how they move better or have a decrease in pain and headaches. It's a great time to get it. And it's always great if you are in there, you can literally hold up the phone and ask them and it doesn't have to be any high production value. It's literally holding your phone right there in the office. So make reputation management a priority for the practice. The key to keeping your reputation strong is to make managing it a priority for yourself and your employees. And that means doing the following. Creating high quality relevant content for your website and social pages. This is your first time typically of when somebody is going to uh, start seeing your practice. So you want to make sure you've got great content for them to look at. Keeping up with technological advances, adding chatbots to your website, using automation to improve customer service and providing self-service options are all examples. Another great example is accepting mobile payments. You will have people that are starting to say, hey, do you accept Venmo? Uh, other options such as that that will help you smooth and, and streamline the process in the practice. Regularly and uh, engaging and interacting with your fans, followers, and patients online. When you make a post on Instagram, make sure when somebody makes a comment, you are commenting back. They like that. They like to be felt and heard, and that will get them to not only come back in, it'll get them to leave a review, and more than likely, bring in a friend for care. Monitoring your social media mentions and responding when it's appropriate to do so. So again, make sure that there's no negative comments that are going on out there. Um, having a system in place to regularly request reviews and testimonials. If you'd like to speak to us about our uh, reputation platform, by all means, please drop that in the comments below and we will get in touch with you. And responding to all reviews is good and bad in a professional manner is always critical, as we said. Uh, it helps from a Google ranking perspective in your Google reviews and anywhere. Your patients love to be seen and be heard and have that bond built amongst them. So again, asking your online followers for their opinions and listening to their concerns is also another suggestion. You can just post on Facebook or on Instagram or in an email that you send out asking them for their opinions on what things are going on. It's a way in which you can improve um, the way your practice flows. And regularly showing appreciation to your most loyal patients and incentivizing them to become brand ambassadors is a great way for you to build some trust amongst them as well as build your relationship within the community. While it's true that you can't control every aspect of your online reputation, you can control a lot of it. By taking an active interest in engaging with your followers online and making their satisfaction a priority, you can give your reputation a boost in your practice. And ultimately, your online reputation plays a big role in your practice's success. In just a few minutes a day, you can implement procedures that will ensure your online reputation remains strong and helps you to attract new prospects and retain your most loyal patients. So again, my name is Dr. Derek Barron. That's my wife, Terry. Uh, you can visit our website. You can email us. You can text us. You can call us. Uh, our goal is to help you grow and scale your practice. We really want to help you, you know, make sure you build a positive review in your community, a positive reputation in your community as well. So if you're a private practice healthcare business owner and you're looking for ways to build your online reputation or what you can do about that, if you have any questions or you'd like to learn more, just enter the word reputation below. We'll get in touch with you. If you're watching this on one of our social channels, add that comment in. If you're seeing this on one of the landing pages, just make sure that you drop that, um, uh, fill out the form and we'll get back in touch with you. So again, Dr. Derek Barron, thanks for taking your time. We, as always at Practice Insider's Edge, want to help you and your practice achieve success on so many levels. Thank you so much. You have yourself a fantastic day.